I'm Matt McCormick, President of Columbia Chamber of Commerce, and welcome to uh, the, the Columbia Chamber's Community Leadership Panel webinar. Uh, this program is being recorded and will be available on the Chamber's social media pages and on the Chamber's COVID-19 resource website located at columbiamochamber.com uh, following this event. Uh, if you've not already done so, please make sure that you mute your computers and your phones so that our guest speakers can be heard easily by everyone on the call. Uh, we'd also like to know who's joining us on the call today, so please take a second, type in your uh, the name of your business or your organization into the meeting chat uh, so we know who all is on there. And then lastly, if time allows, at the end of the webinar, we will take questions via the meeting chat feature. If you have questions as we go, uh, please type it into the chat box and we'll do our best to answer it at the end of the webinar. Uh, we have many people on the webinar today. Uh, we appreciate every single one of you for taking time to join us this morning, uh, but we have a great deal of people on the webinar today, and I know that we'll have many, many questions. Uh, we ask that you please put those in the chat feature. Uh, Nick Knoth, our Director of Government Affairs, will be monitoring the questions. Uh, at the end, we'll do our best to get to all the questions. If we have a number of questions that are very similar, uh, we might combine those into one type of question to ask that. Uh, and so that way we can hit more questions as we go. So uh, let's go ahead and get rolling. But first, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you, each and every one of our businesses out there for doing your part. Uh, we know this has not been easy on anyone, uh, but the reason that we are here and the reason that we are uh, in this process of being able to look at a, a coming out of the stay at home orders because everybody has done their part. Uh, has been responsible and, and uh, come together to work together uh, to get us here. So a big thank you to all of our businesses. And then also a great big thank you to uh, our uh, to, to Stephanie Browning with Health and Human Services, her team, our city and our county. Um, many decisions were being made, being made by all these groups that uh, the challenge is making these decisions a lot of times with very little information. And so we appreciate all the work that everybody's put into everything. So. Uh, in today's community leadership panel, uh, we'll be discussing the Columbia's recovery plan as our community prepares to turn back the dial on the current stay-at-home order. So joining us on our panel today is Stephanie Browning, the director of Columbia Boone County Public uh, Health and Human Services, uh, Brian Treese, our Columbia mayor, uh, John Glasscock, the Columbia city manager, uh, and then Dan Atwell, Boone County Presiding Commissioner. We'd like to thank each of you for taking time out of your very, very busy schedules uh, today to speak to our business community. Uh, so again, for everyone attending, please make sure that your microphones are muted throughout the duration of the webinar. And we'll take questions, uh, put your questions there in that chat feature and we'll get to those at the end. Uh, so each of our panels, the structure for today is each of our panels will have about seven minutes to speak, seven, eight minutes to speak. Uh, and then we'll spend any time left at, at the end answering those questions that have been submitted. So, so I would like so, to introduce our first speaker. Uh, our first speaker is Stephanie Browning. Uh, and we'd like to introduce Stephanie to discuss the new orders that will be going into effect on May 4th. Uh, to, con to continue keeping our community's health and safety a priority as we per turn back the dial and begin lifting uh, the stay at home order. So Stephanie, we're gonna turn this over to you. And I know that there was a, a, a press release put on the city's website about uh, later this afternoon, uh, what all is gonna be coming out. But could you speak first kind of about the process that, you, that uh, went into gathering input from our health experts, as well as uh, business professionals and others developing the new regulations and guidelines, and then maybe switch over to speaking about the structure of the order that you're working on. So Stephanie, I'll turn this over to you. Stephanie, are you there? You might be muted. Okay. You can oh, there me. you are. Perfect. Thanks. I had to unmute. We can hear you now. Good. Well, I want to a thank you for allowing me an opportunity to participate today. Um, it's it has been a rough couple of months, um, but I have actually gained so many new connections in this community and. Um, just so grateful for the guidance and the wisdom of so many people that have been willing to share. So um, let me just real quick give you a, a quick update on what our status is in Boone County. We added a new case overnight, so our total number of cases now stands at 94. 
Uh, we have four that are still in isolation. We have a number of contacts that we continue to follow um, and, and check in with daily. Uh, we've got a good structure in place, and, and our team is able to make up or is able to keep up with what's happening. Um, I think if anyone watches the news, um, they see that we are doing quite well here in Boone County, but um, to our west in Saline County and Pettis County, um, they just continue to have increased cases, Montauk County as well. Um, and then, of course, St. Louis, the whole St. Louis area continues to grow. So we sit in a, in a very delicate spot in mid-Missouri in that we are on I-70 between all of these hot spots. And so I always have to remind people that it's one thing to look at Boone County, but we have to look at um, the region as well. We cannot lose sight of that. Our, our hospitals are a 28 catch, county catchment area, so we have to look at that. Um, as far as um, how we've been working to think ahead for the next steps, um, it feels like life is a daily Zoom um, or a phone call, but we are in regular communication virtually every day with our hospitals, um, making sure that our systems are strong. Um, we have a weekly call with our regional health departments that we initiated so that we can assist them if they need extra help um, as their cases are growing or and just offer each other, you know, to find out what's going on in our counties around us. Um, we have calls with the Department of Health and Senior Services on a regular basis. We have calls um, with all the metropolitan health departments, so Kansas City, St. Louis, St. Charles, Springfield, um, so that we are you know, sharing the best information um, and just really trying to be very situationally aware of what's going on in, the, in our state. Um, naturally, we've been following the CDC guidance all along. Uh, there are regular calls with the Centers for Disease Control where they're providing updates as well. So um, it's a very robust health system in the state and um, the communication is very, very strong. Um, the other thing that I that has been very helpful to me is, um, well, I've, first of all, I should probably really thank Matt, Stacy, and Amy. Uh, the Chamber, Ready, and CVB have been connecting me with different business leaders, different sectors, that so I can hear, you know, how their operations work as we think about all the things that come moving forward what are the nuances in a business environment that we need to be mindful of. And so that has really um, helped me to um, think about, you know, how how something works in a, a restaurant. I mean, I know pretty much how things work in a restaurant. I have to say that. But, you know, there's just some different different sectors that I've not been that familiar with. They really helped me, for example, with the construction sector. Um, and so we were able to make some changes there. So um, it's just been a lot of good discussion, um, a lot of time thinking, trying to be smart, um, allowing for a way for our community to have a slow reopen um, that doesn't jeopardize everything that we've gone through in the last five weeks where, um, you know, we've, it, this has been, I, I know, for many, this has been economically devastating, and I I want to make sure that as we move forward, the economy can recover and we and we don't harm our population because I think we all love this community a great deal. So, um, the one thing that I think we're really going to have to focus on because we don't have a vaccine, we don't have a treatment, and we don't have herd immunity. So the thing that we I have to emphasize moving ahead that we have to focus on is social distancing. That physical separation of six feet, um, if you can't do that in your work environment, people should be wearing masks um, if they can't maintain that. But that's going to be the thing going forward. We're, this is going to be our new normal, I think, for a long time. So I'm happy to take any questions, Matt. Does that cover everything?
You know, it'd help if I it'd help if I unmuted myself. Um, I apologize, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you a boy, really that's great, a long silence. Yeah, I asked you a really great question. Uh, <laughs> let me go back to this. Thank you. Uh, so, on the city's website, the announcement went out uh, that there'd be uh, a community update at one thirty. Um, is there something that it, can you mention? What can people expect to see in that, or what can people expect to see uh, at the the new order coming out today? Uh, what can people expect to see in kind of that uh, look? What they need to be looking for? Uh, well, uh, it will be coming out at one thirty, and I'm not going to go into a, a lot of detail now because I think I owe it to the community yeah. as a whole to make that available at that time. Um, I will tell you that coming with it will be some guidance, some very specific guidance for businesses that our, my staff has been working on. Um, I have sort of a, like a, a roadmap, I would call it, to, to the future, like how I see things phasing out. Um, so, you know, we'll have, a, a, we'll have like frequently asked questions that come with it. So there'll okay. be a lot of information out this afternoon. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for that really good question in silence. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I apologize about that. Uh, I was trying to make sure I mute myself and follow my own rules. Um, so with that, um, we're going to move to our next speaker. Uh, next, we'd like to turn things over to uh, Mayor Treese. Uh, Mayor, can you please tell us a little bit about how Columbia has approached this new plan using local epidemiology, uh, the data from that to transition to a reopening process. How do the orders, uh, how do the orders related to Columbia businesses relate to those that, uh, for the state? So, Mayor, we appreciate you being on the call, so I'll turn this over to you. Thank you, Matt. Can you hear me okay? We can. Thank you. Great. Well, first, let me say thank you to all the businesses on this call. I am grateful for your sacrifice. Uh, over these last six weeks, both in the way that you have followed the guidance and advice of our public health director, but also in the way that you have taken care of not only your employees, but also uh, your consumers and our community. You know, there's both large and small employers and, and uh, have really stepped up to the plate here to, to reinvent themselves and take care. Um, you know, I'll mention Veterans United, uh, you know, working with local restaurants to buy meals every day for first responders or our unsheltered population to, you know, small one and two person operations like Broadway Diner that are serving free food to hungry kids uh, every single day. And, uh, you know, it's just I've, I've always remarked about what a benevolent community we are and um, not only in times like this, but especially in times like this. You know, six weeks ago, Matt, to answer your questions, I, I um, had a community briefing where we really came through and announced in conjunction with our three hospitals, our three institutions of higher ed, Columbia Public Schools, the business community, um, public health and safety officials, how we uh, intended to prepare and respond and recover from uh, coronavirus. And at the time, I committed to lead with the epidemiology, not political pressure or public opinion, to listen to um, data and science and, and our healthcare professionals, um, to be prepared but not panic, uh, and to show compassion to our patients. Think back, it seems like a year ago that this was the week before True False Film Festival when we had 10 to 14,000 people from around the world coming to Columbia. And um, we uh, made a decision then to really um, protect our community. And I think because of, of the um, sincerity and commitment of everybody involved, uh, we can be very thankful for the results that we've seen. Um, at last week's city council meeting, Director Browning um, presented council with those four triggers that um, she needs before we move out of that um, preparedness and response phase into the first um, phase of recovery. And those, those, those triggers, those, those thresholds for action, if you will, um, are really a sustained reduction in cases for the last 14 days, um, the ability of local hospitals to safely treat COVID patients and um, other patients needing health care without resorting to crisis uh, standards of care. Uh, as well as um, the ability of our public health department to do contact tracing and the capacity to test everyone with COVID-19 symptoms. And I think we can add to that 
asymptomatic testing, antibody testing, uh, all of those things that you're seeing um, now being talked about um, both locally, statewide, and nationally. Last week, on Tuesday, I was able to announce with Boone Hospital and MU Healthcare that they were able to safely treat all clinically necessary services um, from cardiac catheterizations to um, routine mammograms to hip and knee surgeries, all of those types of cases while they preserve their excess capacity and PPE and hospital supplies for any potential COVID cases. That's one of those triggers that Stephanie needed to hear uh, in order to get us uh, to, to, to this afternoon's announcement. Uh, Matt, you asked how we are working with the community. I can tell you, um, I, I call it the, the, my 333 meetings. Um, our three institutions of higher ed, our three um, hospital systems, Truman VA, Boone, and um, um, MU Healthcare, as well as um, our Boone County Fire Protection District 911 and, and uh, CFD, CPD here in, in the city limits. And I'll throw into that K through 12. I, I think we have been great partners along with the business community to really um, lead with that epidemiology. You know, because of MU Healthcare, uh, they were able to develop an agreement with Gene Trait. Um, that's a local testing laboratory here in Columbia to accelerate the testing. I think that has helped Stephanie and her team get on top of the tests that we've seen here. The, I think we're up to over 4,000 tests now um, taken in Columbia, thanks to MU Healthcare and Boone Hospital's drive-through testing. Um, I think we're able to, um, you know, to, to, to say proudly uh, that because of the steps that we took early on, a couple weeks ahead of the governor um, and, and other cities, um, that you know, we went from being one of the cities with the highest um, positive cases per 100,000 to one of the lowest uh, cities uh, in, in, in cases per 100,000. And even though we're the fourth largest city in the state, we now have, no matter how you measure it, we have now one of the lowest um, incident rates um, in Missouri. And we wanna keep it that way. And that's why I think um, uh, the, the decision and the input that, that Director Browning has made, I think um, is, is, uh, puts Columbia and Boone County on a good footing uh, for how we move forward and how, how we slowly begin to reoperate, to, to reopen um, our community and our economy. Uh, I do want to point out, uh, and, and I'll, I'll attribute it to, uh, um, to Gary Ward, the Vice Chancellor of MU, and I happened to mention it to the governor on a phone call Tuesday morning, and then he put it in his press release. Look, this is not a, a, a switch that we flip, like a light switch. This is like a dial that we turn. And every time we take a baby step to reopen the economy, we have to ask ourselves, are cases rising? And if so, we ask ourselves, is it controllable? And I have to know from the hospital system that yes, they have enough excess capacity, enough beds, enough supplies, enough PPE um, to be able to answer both of those questions the right way. And when they do say yes to both of those questions, we can turn that dial a little bit more. I wanna emphasize, that we're not out of the woods yet as we continue to maintain and gradually reopen with these milestones that Stephanie has identified. Um, we do it all for the goal of getting back to a normal of where we wanna be in the fall of this year. Um, think for a minute about 30,000 college kids coming back to Mizzou in August and September, about large 200 person events at bars, um, you know, I don't know any college kids that like to social distance. Um, we need to make sure that we are putting protections in place so that we can lift those restrictions later. You heard me talk about those three objectives. I think those three objectives have now changed a little bit to COVID is going to be with us for a while. And we need to put those protections in place, not just as a city, but in your individual businesses to protect your employees, to protect your consumers, so that those protections continue while Stephanie's order lifts um, this afternoon and later um, and, and in order to continue the progress that we've made and preserve that capacity, that resilience that our healthcare providers need um, when we do get a spike in cases. So happy to answer any questions or, or follow up um, as necessary, Matt. Thank you.
Mayor, thank you so much for your time. Um, one of the things you did bring up, uh, I wanted to, to say thank you on was the collaboration that we've seen uh, throughout the whole community and uh, between the city and the county and the uh, higher education and the business community. It's It's been great to see and it has been truly a collaborative effort. I also wanted to say thank you to the city council for their approval of some of Randy Cole's work with those micro loans for our small businesses. Uh, that, that went a long way, so we appreciate that so much. Yeah. Well, look, it's easy to do this when you feel like you have 90 percent support from the community. It's yeah. it's as these decisions get tougher and more um, difficult and more challenging that that our job becomes more difficult. And, and you know, for the for the folks on the call, look, um, we know. I mean, how do we define what a spike in cases is? Is it two? Is it 10? Is it 40? Is it 100? Um, and that takes a different meaning when you know we have. 400 empty hospital beds right now, but the public doesn't always understand that. And at the same time, we don't want the public to become so relaxed that they think, oh, the, it's 70 degrees outside. We don't have any active hospitalizations. We can lean back and relax a little bit. We're not there yet. And yeah. we need to continue to exhibit good behavior, wearing your mask, continue to social distance, um, take those physical and, and self-limiting steps as you begin to open up your business um, to protect your workers, to protect your customers, and protect our community in the long run. Thank you. That's a, you know, everybody's been diligent, and that's where we're, that while we're in the place we're at where we're able to have these discussions, and uh, we need people to continue to be diligent. So thank you. Uh, remind everybody, if you have questions, continue putting those in the chat feature, and we'll get to those at the uh, at the uh, end of the webinar. So from that, we want to uh, also hear from our city manager, John Glasscock. Uh, John, do you have anything to add uh, to what the mayor said, but then also start talking about uh, what the mayor said on the new orders um, or how the city will plan on approaching them? And can you please discuss how the city's own operations uh, have altered in response to the coronavirus and how that might be changing during the rollback? Well, I'll just thank you, Matt. And I just want to yeah. reiterate um, Stephanie and, and the mayors, uh, thank you. It, it, it's great to be in charge of a city that, that everybody understands where we're trying to go and, and everybody's going in the same direction. Uh, so I thank everybody for that. Um, you know, my, my role in this is, is always, when we started, is to reduce the impact that the city has on businesses in the community and, and, and citizens. And so we did that by, you know, setting up, uh, reducing our, our meters downtown, uh, we're doing loading zones for uh, our carry out businesses. We did away with transit fees. We did away with fees on utilities or, or and charges uh, if you didn't pay your bill, uh, those types of things. So, you know, that's that's where we got started and that's where we, we went to. Uh, we let people work from home. We continue to let people work from home. Uh, that's going to have to be done going forward even with the new orders you know we're going to as stephanie described social distancing that includes us uh, we probably won't open city hall immediately we want to get our people back in here get them settled in understand what social distancing is um, what ppe when they need it uh, how we supply it uh, how you use it uh, we have to train our own employees we have a lot of people that share pickup trucks cabs and, and those types of things. So are we, you know, when we start opening back up our, and we do social distancing, are we going to have to start taking our own personal cars there uh, as well as our city equipment uh, to keep the social distancing going? Those are the things that we're having to deal with uh, from the city's own operation side. And so as we look to roll back uh, these things, you know, I, it, I, I go back, you know, I, I don't want to be a burden right off the bat to businesses and the citizens. So, you know, we'll take it slowly. We'll turn that dial back. You know, we'll probably start with, you know, I, I can tell you uh, we need the police department to start enforcing traffic laws downtown because I witnessed somebody passing a car on the middle in the middle of Broadway because one was going too slow. So, you know, we got to start dialing that back up because traffic will come back downtown. Uh, probably the loading zones will go away first would be my guess because uh, I got, already got requests from people who are going to start opening businesses or think they are on Monday uh, where they want a loading zone as well, which is which is downtown. Uh, but when we do start doing in-seat dining, if that's allowed, 
uh, the loading zone will probably go away first. And then we'll start, I'll work with council to, to, to um, decide when we start charging for meters, uh, start charging for transit. Those, that's probably on the second tier phase where we get there. And then lastly, probably we'll start charging the fees and, and the, the utility charges that for late payments and those kind of things. But that's probably down the road a ways. But again, we will work with the uh, council to determine those dates as we move forward. One other thing that I would tell you is, you know, in City Hall, this building wasn't set up very well for social distancing and, and preparing for the public. Uh, we have a lot of tight spaces where public come in and pay bills. We might have to modify some of that stuff going forward. Uh, uh, so we're looking at that. And we're also preparing for the next surge if it should come in the fall. Uh, when the students come back, you know, they're going to be coming from all over the world. And, and that's that's something that we're preparing for and trying to look out for. So we'll be working with Stephanie and the mayor on that as well. Uh, be happy to answer any questions uh, anybody would have. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak, Matt. John, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you being here. I know you're all busy trying to uh, do like everybody else and figure out how we how you open your own business while at the same time how do you take care of the citizens and the business community so we appreciate all that your work all that you and your teams are working on um, with that we're going to switch over now to a county look um, and we have a presiding commissioner with us today uh, dan outwell uh, give us an update on what to look like uh, for the at the county level uh, what have you been hearing from Bo Boone County businesses uh, that may differ from businesses in the city limits? Uh, and how can we expand, expect Boone County to approach uh, the new plan? Dan, are you there? Dan, you might be mu muted. Well, we're not hearing Dan right now, so uh, Commissioner Atwell, if you would, if you would, please, um, if you are muted, make sure you unmute your mic, and uh, whenever you come on, we'll uh, we'll let you go through some of your comments. Uh, with that, we're going to jump into some questions uh, that we have to start off with, and uh, some of the questions that we've received uh, revolve maybe around the tourism uh, side of things for Columbia, which is a which is a big uh, part of our economy. Um, and so I'm going to kind of combine a couple of these questions and Stephanie, Mayor, John, um, and Dan, if you're still there, uh, I'll open this up to the panel as a whole. Uh, can we expect to see guidelines for events, festivals, or concerts coming out in the near future? Uh, we're also going to include, somebody asked about uh, MU football games and high school graduations. Um, so uh, I'll open that up to the panel and let y'all let y'all jump in. Since nobody's jumping in, I'm going to, Stephanie, ask that question to you, maybe. Okay. Um, can you hear me? We can. I'm sure I unmuted myself. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, so, it's going to be a while before we have big events. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just going to put that out there very candidly. Um, you know, you can't socially, there's going to have to be a lot of conversations is all I can say going on because you can't socially distance yourself at a large gathering like that. So um, we are a ways from that. I mean, I hope that we'll get there, but um, we'll definitely be having conversations with the university. They've been really, really good to work with and, and um but it's too early to talk about that now. Okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I understand. Mayor, John, or do y'all have any uh, further comments on the on those type of things? No, I mean, I think it illustrates the challenges that, that we face right now. And, you know, I think in, in just to kind of illuminate some of the conversations I've had with the governor and, and the, the mayors of the other, the big four cities in, in Missouri, um, you know, the governor's been very respectful of, I won't call it local control, but certainly the conditions in individual communities. And, you know, St. Louis and Kansas City, both being on the border, they have over a thousand active cases. Um, Illinois and Kansas both had stay at home orders prior to them. Um, I think it's important for, um, 
for both this audience, but also, I mean, taxpayers in general, that that we are consistent and clear in our communications, because when we're not, that causes confusion. Confusion call, undermines public trust in, in government. But just think for a minute, the, the example I used with 30,000 college kids coming back from how many um, hometowns um, with whatever conditions they may have, and you, you begin to see the magnification of of this issue and you know i think we should just plan on a fall surge in in this and, and think about how do we make those adjustments to um to our businesses and operations um to to accommodate that and i'm not saying this that lasts all summer um but i i do think we need to be very mindful of 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 this highly contagious virus with no vaccine at the moment um, so that we continue to flatten that curve. You know, it's, it's hard to be quoted as saying, we'll likely see increased cases. Um, however, I think that's inevitable as, uh, as we continue to take these baby steps. So I think, I think Director Browning's being responsible in turning that dial a little bit, evaluating what we're seeing and then deciding, do we dial it back or dial it up a little bit? And I don't think anybody on this call wants us to have to, to um, extend a stay-at-home order or um, get out of it only to have to go back to it and, and revert back to that. Um, so I, I appreciate everyone's patience and, and um, frankly, respect for the epidemiology here. Appreciate it. Mayor, while you're on, we had a question. Uh, for you, you had brought up milestones. You had talked about the milestones uh, whenever you were speaking. Uh, will those milestones be determined at a local uh, city level or at a state level? Yeah, definitely at a local level, I, I, I tell you. And, you know, because part of it has to do with local capacity of our health department, local capacity of our hospital systems here. Um, and, and the caveat that I would put there is we have to not only think about Columbia and Boone County, uh, EMU Healthcare has 14,000 patients from a 25 county area that come here for their primary diagnosis. Um, Truman VA is the designated catchment area for veterans in five states. Um, they see everybody from the Iowa border to um, um, the Arkansas border for primary care of veterans. Um, and so it's, it's not just uh, our community. Now we are also, I've always said, while we are disproportionately impacted um, by this, we are also similarly disproportionately advantaged. We have more hospital beds than a typical city of, of, our, of our capacity or of our um, population. Um, but you look at hot spots like Saline County and Monota, um, the lack of rural hospitals in Cooper and um, Callaway County, and you begin to see kind of the, 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 the challenge that we have here. And um, you know that tourism question, we, we benefit from it because people come here, but we're also at risk of it because people come here. And that's why I think when we start opening things up, I, I'm grateful that, that business owners take this seriously. I've, I've been impressed with the plans that I have seen or the, 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 the steps that businesses are willing to do in terms of, of, of cordoning them, cordoning off their stores, moving to one-way aisles. Um, Schnooks is counting uh, people that come into the store um, you know, offering PPE for your employees, all of those things really help make a difference. Thank you. Um, Stephanie, a couple quick questions for you. Um, on what's going to be put, uh, put out this afternoon at 1.30, um, will it have guidelines um, for all the different parts, such as guidelines for child care, gyms, restaurants, uh, things along those lines? Yes. Um, we will have um, we will have guidance for businesses. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll have sort of a, a version of like what the roadmap going forward looks looks like. There'll be frequently asked questions, and we will have a um, we have a website that is or it's not a website. We have an email address specifically for our businesses when they have questions. And so I'll give that to you now, and that, that information will also be out there, but it's businessguidance at como.com, como.gov, sorry. Businessguidance yeah. at como.gov. So um, yes, we wanna, 
you know, I, one of the things that is so challenging with all this is that there's so many moving parts into getting this right, and I really, I really wish that like I could give more opportunity, more time for people to get things up and get going, but. Um, moving as fast as it, as it can, and we're trying to make sure that we have as much information out there to help everybody do their part and get back to work. Wonderful, and it looks like Whitney just posted that email address up on the chat feature for everybody, uh, so I see that. So that also kind of rolled right into one of our other questions. You know, after everybody has the, has the chance to read the new orders with all the guidelines in it that are going to be specific to them, uh, the best, if they have more clarifying questions, that's where they need to go is that email address. Yes, yes, we have a whole team of employees that are going to be devoted to working to get those answers to them. And monitoring that. Wonderful. Um, we have a question on enforcement. So will businesses be protected by uh, making sure they post signage, noting physical distance required uh, as they abide by the outlines by the city and the county. Just kind of people are trying to think ahead and making sure that they do their part um, and dealing with, you know, working through that process with possible consumer complaints and things along those lines. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure. I'm I think it's more of a question of, you know, making sure uh, going through the guidelines, you know, people want to do their part. Are they, quote unquote, protected, if you will, if they put up, a, you know, signage uh, in their gym, let's say, uh, saying, you know, we require you to be X amount of feet apart and such. Would that be good business yeah, practice for be, them? I think that would be an excellent business practice and to really, you know, I mean, because it's going to be important for people to have eyes on what's happening for sure. But signage would be outstanding. <laughs> could, yeah, I, it's a very good idea. Wonderful. Our another question: Are we expecting widespread uh, testing um, for residents and workforces in Boone County? Uh, we receive a lot of questions around the fact of. You know, do I need to test all my employees when they're coming back? You know, what are some what are some uh, thoughts through that process? So, um, as the mayor mentioned earlier, we are very fortunate to have Gene Trait here in our community. So we have been lucky from day one to well, almost day one to get results within 24 hours. Uh, the kind of testing that they're doing is limited is still at this time limited to people with symptoms. So that would be fever, shortness of breath, you know, uh, respiratory symptoms like that. So um, we are not able to do widespread testing at this point. The supply is just not there. What the state has been doing is working to increase that and trying to get more testing available in some areas where testing has been very limited or where there's big increases. So for example, um, they just delivered a test to Saline County, and I believe this week Saline County's been um, making testing available to asymptomatic people um, to try to get a nature to try to gain a better understanding of how much uh, coronavirus or COVID-19 is in the community. But we are not there yet, so um, it is not recommended. It would it would not be recommended to try and require um, testing for all your employees uh, to come to work or or because testing is just a moment in time. So mm -hmm. if you had a, you, if you wanted to bring an employee back to work on Monday and you wanted to have them tested on Saturday uh, and their test was negative, then on, but they got exposed on Sunday, it's still gonna be a matter of days before, you know, like probably around five days before they would start to develop some symptoms. So that, that would be, um, an expensive way to that would not expensive in the cost of the test, but it would not give you the confidence. Um, it should not give you the confidence that you would think. So, does that okay. make sense? Yeah, it does. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Nick Knoth, our government affairs director, has a couple questions that he's been given um, or that he's received. And so, Nick, I'm going to turn this over to you to maybe ask one or two of those questions. Yeah. Hi. Can you guys hear me? We can. All right. Yes. So a couple of questions we have from the audience here. Uh, and Stephanie, we know you're trying to uh, not share too much before this afternoon's briefing so that the whole community gets it at once. 
Um, but can you tell us, will there be specific guidelines with certain industries, whether it's a salon or a gym and different types of businesses like that that are more specialized? Yes. There will be. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, another question I have. Um, with regard to uh, testing, and I know we already briefly discussed this, but is the goal there to be able to implement eventually widespread testing? Uh, and how does testing overall impact the ability to reopen? Well, you, you definitely need to have the capacity to have the testing you need for people that are symptomatic, which we definitely, we have that here in, in Boone County. Um, and in fact, we have capacity through our drive-through areas, our drive-through clinics set up at MU in uh, Boone and even at VA for the veterans. You know, they're also testing people from other counties as well. So the, their tests are not just limited to Boone County, but there have been over 6,000 tests done since they started that. Um, the goal ultimately is more testing becomes available, you know, statewide and across the country. Um, the goal will be to probably have greater testing out there because we want to know the true, we want to have a better sense of the incidence in the community and what's going on. So we know that there are uh, people that are asymptomatic um, and they come back po with positive tests. So, you know, if you had no symptoms and you didn't feel horrible, you might not have taken yourself out of, out of society for the recommended time. So we will definitely be wanting to see more testing to looking for those things. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, Stephanie, this is Matt. I, we've received a couple questions on the topic of um, where can people find the guidelines after 1.30 today? And, um, and so this is to the city and, and if Dan has joined us, the county, where will those be posted? Where can people find those specific guidelines? Some of the other questions have been, you know, how can they watch the 1.30 press conference or the community update, I apologize. Um, and Nick has, just for everybody's knowledge, Nick has loaded up and copied and pasted and put on the chat feature uh, how you can live stream it uh, over the internet and then also the different channels with Spectrum, Medium, Com, and CenturyLink. So make sure you check that out. But whenever people are wanting access to it, where can they find all the information uh, posted? Would that be on the city's uh, COVID-19 website? Yes. Yeah, so if you go to the city page, um, there is you'll see a, a link that takes you right to all the COVID-19 resources. So that's where it would be. Um, and that, and I believe within the county, um, when you are on the county's website, it, there's a link for the health department there. So that can also take you back. So they should be available on both sites. Okay, wonderful. And then also we will make sure to post those uh, on our COVID-19 website and uh, help push that out to all of our business community. Um, Stephanie, are there anything, not getting, knowing that the guidelines won't be out till this afternoon, uh, is there anything you can suggest businesses start doing now to prepare for the reopening? Um, you know, where, you know, maybe some thoughts about that process. How can, how can, how can businesses go ahead and start uh, getting ready? Well, you know, the thing that I emphasized earlier is thinking about your layout and about um, and about social distancing, right? So, um, if if you were if if you are going to have be open, say your retail and you're going to be open to the public, um, how are you going to keep the people apart? How are you going to disinfect? How are you going to protect your workers? Are you going to require people to wear masks on both sides? Those, you know, those are all things that you would want to think about. Um, you know, the layout because much of it is is um, it's that physical separation that's going to be needed. You know, and and um, how are you how are you going to manage your employees coming back? Are you going to every day? Are you going to be asking them if they have symptoms or a fever? Or you know, what are your policies going to be if um, somebody one of your employees or you get notified that um, someone was in your facility and now you have to figure out who the close contacts are. Um, if, you, if you're an industry that has, um, not all the industries do this, but if you're an industry that has lists of who's been in your building, um, 
you know, thinking like hair salons or gyms, you know, when you when you check in, if, if there's a case and, and my nurses come back to you and say, um, we've had somebody in your facility and from this period to this period, we need to know everyone who was in there or during these hours or, you know. So those are the things that, you know, make me make me anxious, but those are the things we're going to need is to really think about how we operate. Wonderful. Well, we want to be respectful of everybody's time. Dan, uh, I was going to check one more time with our county commissioner. Commissioner Atwell, were you able to join us? It does not sound like it, so we'll get him on a call in the future. Um, for uh, I just want to give everybody an opportunity for any closing comments. Uh, Mayor, did you have any closing comments? No, I and and again, I I'm I am sincere when I when I when I say how grateful I am for our community here. I this this has been unprecedented for not just us as decision makers and 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 dealing with at least six weeks ago the best information we had that changed not only by the day but by the hour. And I know that has left um, all of you with. Uh, an impact and a sacrifice that um, nobody would ever hope to uh, to encounter. But uh, my goal in this, as we begin to reopen, is to um, make Columbia stronger than it's ever been. And and Matt, I am grateful for these types of conversations and others uh, like it, not only here in Columbia um, that wouldn't have otherwise existed without this crisis, um, but also the model of leadership that we've shown with our hospital and higher ed and, and public schools and business community to, um, to, to work together as we get out of this and get through it. And we'll continue to get through it together. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Thank you for those words. And thank you to all of our speakers for your time today. I know you're all very, very extremely busy. Um, we're forever grateful for all the work you've put in as we navigate these unprecedented times in our community. We want to encourage everybody to make sure they watch the live stream at 1.30 this afternoon. Uh, and thank you to everybody for listening. Uh, before we sign off, I'd like to remind everybody that the division of the Columbia Chamber of Commerce will be hosting a special webinar opportunity with Kim Becking. Uh, beginning on next Wednesday, uh, on May 6th, the Momentum Mindset Series will be a three-part interactive and live program focused on helping you to reduce stress, communicate and lead more effectively, and create momentum for what's coming next in your business. Uh, to register for the webinar, <clears throat> excuse me, the webinar series, please vid our, visit the events tab on our website. Uh, as always, please check out our social media uh, and our COVID-19 resource pages at columbiamochamber.com. And the recording of this will be, uh, recording of this event and this webinar will be uh, posted shortly after the conclusion of this. With that, uh, we thank you and stay safe, Columbia.